Move over, Game of Thrones. Get lost. Lost. We have another contender for worst series finale ever. Now hold on before you go clicking away at that dislike button. I have a few things I want to make clear. Stop it. I actually liked pretty much the whole season up until the end. I mean, look at the episode-by-episode episode scores on IMDb. They're fantastic. And then... Oh my god! So in this video, we'll be taking a look at Dexter New Blood's ending and where I think it went off the rails. And bonus points if you can guess what moment in the finale I thought everything completely derailed. I'll let you know when we get there. The final episode, titled Sins of the Father, begins with the aftermath of Kurt Caldwell's arson attack on the Morgan home in Iron Lake, New York. Kurt Caldwell was this season's serial killer antagonist who collected runaways from his truck stop and turned them into preserved corpses so they would be kept safe from the trauma of the outside world, a trauma he'd witness as a child when his father, a truck driver, beat up prostitutes he'd bring back to his rig. Ah, the life on the road. I also found it a bit weird that Kurt kept offering jobs to these women and many times throughout the season asked the head waitress Susan for applications, and yet she's never like, hey, all these new waitresses keep going missing. Susan. Yeah. Could you, uh, get me one of those applications? Anyway, the last episode isn't about Kurt because he's caught and killed by Dexter and his son Harrison in episode 9. The main emotional thread of this season has been the relationship between Dexter and his son, a son he abandoned 10 years ago after the events of season 8. In one of the finale's final scenes, we see Harrison pick up a letter meant for his caregiver, Hannah McKay, who you may remember from seasons 7 and 8. This letter came into Harrison's possession after Hannah's death, its contents leading him to believe his father didn't die in a hurricane those years ago, but that he had actually abandoned him. And Harrison wants answers. I wanted to look him in the eye and ask him how he could pretend like I didn't fucking exist. Over the course of the season, Dexter struggles to tell his son the truth, that his abandonment wasn't because he didn't love his son, it was to keep him safe from the monster he truly is. He's owed an explanation. But the only one is that his father is a monster. But when Dexter finds his son has the same dark tendency that he does, he comes clean, believing it better he teach him Harry's code rather than let the darkness take over. For avid Dexter fans, you'll know Harry's code as a set of guidelines for killing. There are about 12 of them in total, but the two most important, especially for this episode, are one, don't get caught, and two, never kill an innocent. Iron Lake was the perfect place for Dexter to hide out, as Dexter says it's full of good people. Since he only kills bad people, it's an ideal place for him to settle down. It's also why he and Harrison need to leave. I know it's hard, but we can't be ourselves here. We can't do what we do. If he's going to train Harrison to follow Harry's code like some serial killer Jedi, they'll need to be someplace where there are lots of bad people, so ideally he suggests Los Angeles. Things this episode start to get a bit weird when Harrison gives up leaving this new home so easily. The kid has been living at truck stops, foster homes, skipping from town to town, and has finally found a family, friends, and a seemingly perfect life, and two minutes later he's like, Can we get a pool? Dexter also has a romance with Chief Angela Bishop, who over the course of the season has become in increasingly suspect that Dexter, who goes by the alias Jim Lindsay, is in fact the Bay Harbor Butcher of Miami. And nothing says getting in the Christmas spirit than holding your lover at gunpoint and bringing him to jail. Now let me know if you guys picked this up, but there's this kind of weird moment where Dexter almost decides to grab this knife and stab her. First, stupid idea, she's a trained police officer a few feet behind him, and two, the consequences of killing her, if it were successful, would break multiple hairy codes and undoubtedly get him caught. But that isn't where I think things go completely nuts. Dexter is brought into questioning for the murder of Matt Caldwell, who in episode 1, Dexter killed when his dark side took over, breaking his 10-year no-kill streak. Now, when he was caught, at first I was like, man, Dexter's goose is cooked. Plus, Angela has been in contact with Lieutenant Angel Batista of Miami Metro with evidence she believes connects him to the Bay Harbor murders. But after watching the scene over and over again, Dexter is right. All the evidence against him is circumstantial. Even Angela's quote-unquote proof that both he and the Bay Harbor Butcher used ketamine is false. We know from the original series that Dexter used a drug called atorphine, or M99. We also, conveniently, never find out what secret evidence Maria Laguerta had, evidence which Batista himself amounted to crazy theories. Batista even ripped up the warrants that Laguerta had kept during her investigation of Dexter that would have otherwise implicated him in the murder of Travis Marshall, the doomsday killer from season 6. I also found it super dumb when Batista says this to Angela. Chief Bishop, 
I hope I didn't give you the wrong impression you know, I'm a happily married man. When just five episodes ago, he hit on her at a police conference. I have a boyfriend. Can he handle you? What I'm trying to say with all of this is, if Dexter were actually put on trial for either the Bay Harbor murders or Matt Caldwell's, he'd more than likely get away with it. Especially Matt's considering the mountain of suspicious evidence pointing at Kurt being his murderer. Kurt lied about his son being alive, had motive for framing Dexter, burned down Dexter's home, and even scrubbed his entire serial killer Motel 6 inspired basement he used to imprison young women. But this isn't where things get unhinged for me, and if you guess the moment I thought everything went to shit was when Dexter kills Logan from his cell, that's a bingo. Ooh, that's a bingo. First of all, him just killing Logan from the cell is far-fetched in and of itself, but I have re-watched this several times and still don't know if Logan was killed by a bullet ricochet or by Dexter cracking his neck. The bullet ricochet is just crazy and lazy writing, and Dexter choking a strong wrestling coach to death also seems wild. But it's not only that that threw me, it was how completely out of character Dexter is from here until the end of the episode. It's like I was watching a completely different Dexter, one who had to fit the ending the writers wanted rather than the one we've spent nine seasons following. So Dexter escapes and calls his son to meet him in the forest at the very location where the white buck was killed in episode one. I'm sure there's some metaphor for the end of innocence here, but come on, Harrison almost stabbed a kid to death for no reason in episode four. And Harrison was almost ready to go with his dad and flee town until he finds out that his father killed Logan. He completely does a 180 to the point where he kills his own father, ironically with the rifle he got from him as a Christmas present. What really pissed me off about this was that the reasoning of the characters here didn't seem true to the characters that were built up over the course of the season. Dexter says to his son, There was no other way. But there was. Several, in fact. He could have done nothing and let the investigation go on. He could have told Angela the truth, that he hunted and killed serial killers, including the one who murdered her best friend, Iris. He could have confessed and saved his son from living with the trauma of killing his own father. Those are just the ones I came up with off the top of my head. Harrison also seems to have forgotten his own words from episode 9, that his father is responsible for saving thousands of lives by killing bad men. So th that means you've saved like thousands of innocent people. Yes, killing Logan was bad and against the code, but going from my dad is a hero responsible for saving thousands to I have to kill him because he screwed up one time is a bit of a stretch. So Dexter dies for giving his son. You did good. And this also releases the ghost of Deb, who acted as Dexter's foil to his inner monologue. But things take an even weirder turn when Angela arrives and lets Harrison go. Not only that, framing it to look as if she were the one to kill Dexter. I just feel like this is such a dumb, unnecessary option. This whole situation could easily have been construed as Harrison killing his father in self-defense since his father clearly went psycho and had just killed Logan and escaped custody. Harrison could have theoretically gotten off scot-free and might even have been able to live in Iron Lake, which he loves so much with his girlfriend. Instead, he's now back to where he was at the beginning of the season, a transient with no home, having lost the one thing he was searching for this whole time, his father. There's also this whole setup of a potential confrontation between Dexter and Batista that we never get to see. I mean, it's cold up there in New York, but damn the blue balls. We also never really see how the other townsfolk react to the fallout of Kurt and Dexter being serial killers, and while I'm at it, what was the point of the rich billionaire? Was it just to be a red herring? Because that dude could have really shaken things up in the story if he were more involved. The most tragic thing I actually thought about this ending is that I was thoroughly enjoying the season right until about halfway through the final episode. Showrunner Clyde Phillips has said he'd be down to do a season two, but no idea on what that would look like with the titular character being dead. But what did you think of Dexter New Blood's ending? Am I totally off? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone, please like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.